51-51. Buckeyes won the last game earlier this year, 87-83. When Iowa won its only game last year, Jay Burson, a star, missed two free throws in the last several seconds, and they lost by two. Iowa in the white, 16-6, 6-3 in the conference. Ohio State in the red, 12-7, 5-4 in the conference. Carter to jump against Ed Horton. Our officials, Ted Hillary, Sid Rotaheffer, and Dick Bester. And it is Hillary who will toss the ball. Ball belongs to Iowa, Jeff Moore. D.J. Armstrong operating in backcourt. And right away, you see that Ohio State has come out in a man-to-man. Moe's in and out, and Terry Carter, the freshman out of Washington, D.C., makes the big rebound. Wilson pulls up. No good. Carter follows. No good. Whistle underneath. That's a foul on Perry Carter, I'm sure. He was being really aggressive on the offensive board and got called for the foul. That's what it is, number 32. Ohio State. The most anyone has fouled out is two. And Carter and White and Burson are those men. Ed Horton conversely has fouled out four times for Iowa. That is a shot. Taken by B.J. Armstrong. Sid Rotaheffer says it is good. And he'll also get a free throw. Well, right there, it looks a little bit like B.J. Armstrong has decided to take this game early. Pump faked him. Jay Burson got him in the air, knocked the shot down, and he's got a chance for a three-point play. Armstrong, an 88% free throw shooter. The man who fouled him, Burson, in the Big Ten, is hitting it better than 93% from the free throw line. <laughs> Nothing, Iowa. And I was out in, they're giving a little token pressure. They're not really trying to keep him from getting the ball in or over the half court line. Curtis Wilson and Burson in back court. Wilson took the first shot for the Buckeyes. Carter's follow did not work. And I always come out in the zone. As we talked about earlier, they're really concerned about getting in foul trouble, particularly their front court. Over the head of White, but out of bounds off the hands of Bill Jones. Back to Tom Davis. And his pupil, Gary Williams, who replaced him at Boston College, and now is in the Big Ten coaching against him. Tough getting the ball in. Wilson feeds but right to Roy Marble. Here comes the Iowa fast break, and there is Horton, and he's got two. Right there, you saw an example of what I would really like to do is push the ball up court, see can they get easy opportunities, and right there they got one. Five-nothing Iowa. And there's a ball thrown by Burson past Francis. Turnover to Iowa. After that turnover, interestingly enough, I saw Jerry Francis say to Jay Burson, let's take it easy. It's usually the other way around. Up to win on the road in basketball and make that in spades in the Big Ten. There's Jones for a little push shot from up to and Isles off to a fast start. And already Burson and Ohio State are saying, we want time out. After all, a minute and 40 seconds has gone by, and the Buckeyes haven't scored anything. Iowa's got seven. Back in a moment to the Carver Hawkeye Arena, Iowa City, Iowa. Tom Davis was afraid that his team might be looking ahead to Monday at number two in the country, Purdue, number one in the Big Ten. But they've started out like a house of fire against the Buckeyes so far. Well, Jim, this really doesn't seem like there are many signs of that early in this time. Uh-oh. That's backcourt and a foul caught against Marble that caused Carter's throw to go backcourt. No substitutions during the timeout. Mercer, their top scorer, has not had a shot yet. Uh oh, off the hands of Carter, out of bounds again. And that was a bad decision there by Jerry Francis. He threw the ball, first of all, back toward the Iowa basket, and he just threw it over Perry Carter's head. Francis! Armstrong for three. He's got six points. Ten to nothing. Oh, oh, loses Carter. Great. 
Davis Wilson did a good job keeping his head up, finding Perry Carter open under the basket. 10 to 2, they're on the board. Mo, he's starting because Jones has moved up front with the loss of Lorenzen. Shot there by E.J. Armstrong, way off the mark, and here comes Ohio State. And again, we'll point out that's Burson's first shot and is off the rim. Burson, the last to touch it, belongs to Iowa. And he's lucky that he did touch it. Had he not, Iowa was off on another fast break. That was a good play by Jay Burson, who I think is an extremely heady ball player. I've seen him do a lot of little things that you don't see in the statistics. Well, remember, Pop's a coach at Muskingum, so he comes by naturally. Horton, tough shot there, and there's a good rebound by Carter. Or rather, by White. Tony White. Another feed to Carter underneath. And again, Wilson delivers. 10 to 4. Armstrong takes it all the way in and feeds off, and Horton repays the favor. Four point Fred Horton. Yeah, what you see there, this is a little bit of a battle of coaches. As you said, they've, they've coached together. They both run the same basic styles. I happen to think that Iowa has a better shot because their bench is a little deeper right now. Mercy. Now, Iowa setting up in his own. Mercy's the man that can crack it, but his first shot didn't look good, did it? No, it didn't look good at all. Now he's got a three-point try, and that's good. He quiets the critics. Excuse me, tells you what he thinks about the first shot. 12-7 <laughs> was a 10-point lead, now a five-point lead. Marble. Tough shot there. Francis is going to draw the foul. And Gary Williams is saying, why foul? He just had his hands up in the air. Well, Gary Williams didn't have the angle we had on that shot. <laughs> it appeared to me that there was a little movement underneath to kind of make Marble uh, get fouled. Michael Reeves comes in, and Kent Hill comes in, and here's some of that bench you're talking about for Iowa. Absolutely. Kent Hill is going to come in. They want him to get on the glass, get some rebounds. Michael Reeves came in. I thought he played extremely well in that blowout against Michigan. He came in, shot the ball, and gave him some scoring power off the bench, and that's something they're going to miss because they're starting Jeff Moe, who normally gives them that threat. Rebounded there by Carter. Now, remember, B.J. Armstrong was not in the game. Reeves has come in, as we said, and Hill has come in, along with Jones and Moe and Marble. Ohio State is not going to the bench yet. Ohio State showing Wilson. good patience. Rebound, that's what he's in there for. Kent Hill, good rebound there. Jones, and that's a charge. And that's a good call by the official. Jones was absolutely out of control on that one. Had his head down and just ran over the man. He's got the ball coming down. I don't know. Well, he I was going to take bit. that one back, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he was definitely moving on that. I thought that was a good call from my angle. Obviously, the replay says differently. Francis will toss the ball in. 15-41 to go. Iowa by six. <laughs> Buckeyes seem to have gotten out of their jittery state when Iowa got off to the fast 10-0 start. Yeah, they did. They turned the ball over earlier, as, and we didn't want to see that from their perspective. And if they show some patience on offense, I think they'll get the kind of shots they'd like to have. Wilson, nice fake there, but that's off the line, and there's Hill with a second rebound and as many tries. Oh, he's dangerous. Three points. I'll tell you what, Ohio State can't afford to let that kid get off because he can shoot three-pointers and he's got the kind of spark that really gets the team involved in the game. Iowa hustling everywhere on the court. Setting up again on the zone. Larson, they let him alone there for a moment. But this is really an active zone by Iowa. They're getting in and making the Iowa... Oh, Ohio good State. move by White. Good move by Tony White. But they're making Ohio State do some things they aren't accustomed to doing just by being active on their zone. A turnover by Iowa. And now B.J. Armstrong's coming back in. Ed Horton's coming back in. Reeves goes out. Oh, let's see. It is Marble. Reeves is in. Took out Billy, yeah, they took out Billy Jones. 
Going as Hill, Reeves, Armstrong, Marble, and Horton has come back in. There's Burson, the feed. Great hustle. Boy, Reeves just snatched that out. Oh, look at this. And he's fouled. And that play was made primarily by Michael Reeves hustling back on defense. Iowa press. And right here you see Ed Horton going up strong to the basket. As I was saying earlier, the play was made by Michael Reeves. Who the pre Ohio State beat the press. Michael Reeves hustled back, deflected the ball. Iowa was able to get it and convert to transition. And the foul is on Grady Mateen, who replaced Tony White in the lineup. Horton now has seven points. He had 22 and 12 rebounds in that block by Michigan. It's 19 to 9. Again, a 10-point lead. Wilson feeds, Burson shoots, no good. Mateen goes up, no good. And Hill is going to be called for pushing off. Talk about getting your crowd involved in the game. This crowd has been involved since day one. Oh, they're absolutely enthused about this. Grady Mateen takes the ball up strong to the basket. You see Ed Horton go down. And you see Hill right away is pushing Perry Carter. It's a lot of push there. And you can see right there the right arm of Ken Hill does push him. Oh, there's a foul. Over the back, Mateen reaching, gets his second. I tell you, Iowa's really come out and played some enthusiastic basketball. They know what's at stake. They know Al Lorenzo's not going to be with them for a while. So they're trying to set a tempo so everybody in the Big Ten know that they're here to stay. And remember, Iowa, AP says they're number 13 in the country. UPI says they're 15. Iowa, on those four turnovers by Ohio State, has a total of 10 points. Hill's going to take it. But that was a feed to Horton. Belongs to Iowa as the ball went off Burson. That was the right idea by Hill, but I'm not sure I'd want him making that kind of pass. He's not exactly a point guard. No. Reeves from the corner. Oh, three more points. That is three three pointers, and Armstrong had a three point play when he was fouled on the shot, and it's a 13 point lead, 22 to 9. State needs to stay patient here. They can't get all the points back, obviously, in one shot. They just need to move the ball around, take whatever scoring opportunity the defense gives them. Well, they've got 13 and a half minutes in this half. Burson. Yes. And that's for two points. Burson now has five points. 22-11, from outside of three-pointer by Armstrong, no good. Look at Hill with the rebound. He wants it all. Doesn't get it. Got it again. Jump ball. Possession will go to Ohio State. Jim, we're seeing some great basketball here. Right there's a tough rebound by Ken Hill to come up with it. Tried to go back up with the shot, and Grady Mateen did a good job of getting his hand on the ball. Gary Williams sends in big, tough John Anderson, co-captain 6'9", 238. Had a eye problem, injury when they first played, but he's in there tonight. And there's a reach in, and that was just hustled by Reeves. Ill advised, perhaps, but it's a foul. Well, you see right there, Tom Davis is applauding it, and I, you'd have to applaud a guy with that kind of effort. Unfortunately, got his hand on uh, Jerry Afray, I'm sorry, Jay Francis' arm. Person. The feed. Back to Burson. Great pass for a big man to get it right back to Jay Person. Jay That's Burson. Anderson who did it. Reeves. All the way in. And who's pushing off this time? Hill again? If you... If you're Coach Tom Davis, I'd have to be concerned that my team is coming down, pushing the ball up. That you want, but what they're doing is they're taking shots too quickly. They're not looking to see what the defense is giving them. They're taking some quick jump shots. They've gone in early, but it's cost them the last couple times down the court. The foul Quinn was on Roy Marble, his second. Marble now goes out, and Michael Morgan comes back in. That's what Tom Davis does all the time. He uses tons of folks, and he's got them. Bill Jones crossed the line right there, and the officials just telling him that he can't do that anymore. Better get it in and do. Carter, charge, it's White. Trying to catch the ball, went into the man. I'm not so sure. 
I don't know what the rule is on that, but it looks to me like he's trying to catch the ball the, under the, a charge. It's called the, the rule of early verticality. The man catching the ball has the right to come down. And I don't know whether or not he had it there. The fisher had a better view of it than I did, and he called an offensive foul. E.J. Armstrong with the ball. Nine-point lead by Iowa, 12.45 to go. Purdue, number two in the nation, number one in the Big Ten, doubling the score against Michigan State in the first half. Ohio State's in man-to-man, -man, and what they really would want um, Iowa to do is to shoot a lot of jump shots. If Iowa gets it in there, they're pretty tough. Horton, no. Mo, he wants it and gets it. Five points for Jeff Moe. Well, that came because Iowa was able to get the ball inside. Jeff Moe did a good job of getting the offensive rebound basket. There you want this Iowa defense. Not that much pressure, except pressure on the man, not down court. They're just playing tough defense. They're being very aggressive, a lot of hustle, enthusiasm. Burson for three, and his second three-pointer. And that is 10 points for Burson already. Armstrong walking with the ball, 24-16. And that was an example of what I was talking about with Iowa. Pushing the ball up, there was nothing there. B.J. Armstrong would have been wise to bring the ball out and take whatever the defense had given. But he should have been more patient. 11.54 to go. At one time, it was 10-0. Then it was 22-9. A 13-point lead. Now it's an 8-point lead. Back selected by the Rasmussen Communications Management and approved by the Big Ten Conference. 11.54 to go. And it's 24-16. Iowa off to a fast start, but now leading only by eight. And I say only because we've got better than half of the first half yet to go. Right there, you saw B.J. Armstrong come out. And he was playing the other day and apparently fell on his arm and he didn't practice uh, very much on Sunday. He practiced on, on Monday a little bit. So they expect, I'm sorry, didn't practice on Monday. He practiced yesterday. But they, they expect that he's all right. Uh-oh, going to be intercepted. Nope. Battle for it, but it's going to go to Iowa. That is the seventh turnover by Ohio State. Oh, Jones, he can shoot. But it's in and out and off the hands of Anderson. But it must have touched Marble because under the basket, Rodeheffer says it belongs to Ohio State. There have been seven turnovers by Ohio State, giving Iowa 12 points. Iowa's turned the ball over three times, and Ohio State's got nothing out of it. Wilson pulls up. Nope. And a bunch of white shirts under the basket. Curtis Wilson's got to do a better job of making decisions there. He's got to force the action because I don't think he's a very good jump shooter. There's Horton. Anderson. Horton's going to go up and try it again. Horton's having a good night. That's nine points for him. Well, he's staying right after it there. He got a shot partially blocked initially, stayed with it, ball came back to him, and then knocked it right in. Good effort. Iowa out. Well, there's another turnover. This is the story here. Oh, he fed the ball right by Armstrong. Made the steal, and then Jones fed it out of bounds. This is the third time in the game there's been a 10-point lead for Iowa. Reeves has come back in. E. Jones, Armstrong, Marble, and Kent Hill is back in now. Horton is out. Barson stepping around. To call that foul on B.J. Armstrong. Wow. As compared to what happened down the other end of the court <laughs> when they called one on Bill Jones. But I've often said, and it's true, even though you may disagree, they see something, they've got to call it. They can't sit around and discuss it, and that's the way they saw it. Well, yeah, I think what they saw was contact. What I saw was that Jay Burson, Burson initiated the contact. Therefore, I thought it was an offensive foul. Now, Burson has 10 points. And in the Big Ten, 93% from the free throw line. And yes, that leads the conference. Overall, 85%. drop through. Francis is going to come back in. Carter's going to come back in for the Buckeyes. And White goes out and Anderson goes out. Again, the eight-point lead. 10-49 left first half. We're in Iowa City. better hold up and wait. 
but he's not going to. He's fouled. That's the second reach in from behind on Michael Reed. Well, I thought Michael did a good job in making the effort to get back, but you gotta understand, he had to understand he was not in position to really get his hand on the basketball. You see Jay Burson coming down. He's keeping an eye on his defense, and he goes up, and as you can see on the left arm, Michael Reeves does grab him as Jay Burson was going up for the shot. He now has two foul shots. It's 26-18. Ohio State's 18 points. Burson has got 12 of the 18 and make that 13 of the 19. of the 20 and Scott Anderson is going to come in. No relation to John Anderson both out of Marion Iowa. Scott Anderson is known for his defense and when Ohio State upset Michigan it was Scott Anderson who did a great job on Gary Grant. Well they got Scott Anderson in obviously to give Jay Burson a break but he didn't turn the ball over very much and I was uh, in Ohio State has had some problem with that so that's a good substitution. Three seconds. Three seconds. Horton looking around at his feet in the paint and got called and now a turnover and here comes Ohio State down by only six. They trail by as much as 13. The team better get it in. No, does not. The team looked absolutely flabbergasted there. He's got a big view from up high in the air. They had the defense all over him and finally by the time he got it in, it was too late. Armstrong for three. Boy, that's costly to make it, but he does not, and Francis has it. The team just simply had nobody to involve the ball, too. Wilson's going to take another shot, and this one he hits for three. There are his first points, and we've got a 26-23 ball game. Well, the, the thing that has happened, it looks to me like with Iowa, you had to be concerned if you're Tom Davis, how much of what was going on out there was just the emotion of being involved in this basketball game. Ball is picked out of bounds off the foot of Horton. Yeah. Upset by Wilson on his way to the baseline. Sure was. Right there, Horton turned to get the basketball to the basket. Didn't pay much attention to the defense around him, and Curtis Wilson did a good job knocking the ball off of uh, Horton's leg. Horton and Marble take a seat. Kent Hill comes back in. Jones is back in. Morgan Reeves and Moe are the other men for Iowa. White comes back in. Mateen takes a seat for Ohio State. So they've got White and Francis and Carter and Burson and Scott Anderson. Fans are counting off the time it took the inbound. Looked like Anderson almost stepped out of bounds coming by us. Can you believe that Burson with a three-pointer, anybody a three-pointer can tie this game after the way it started? No, no. That's a little step there, Jay. Nine twenty-five to go. Iowa by three. The thing that can really hurt Ohio State, as well as any team, is an unforced turnover, and that was an example of one. There was no reason for Jay to travel there. Moore's way long right to Carter, who was outside the paint almost on the other side. Curtis Wilson getting ready to come back in. Ohio State. Burson's got loose for three and does not get it. Carter, big rebound, puts it up and in. That was an extremely difficult shot to make, but right there, Perry Carter made it. It was a good offensive rebound for Ohio State. One point game, 26 25. It was 22 to 9. 16 to 4. Ohio State has outscored Iowa lately. That's quite a spurt by the Buckeyes, 16 to 4. After they trailed 10 to nothing. Yeah, it really is quite a spurt. That's a turnover again. Basketball. That's Burson twice now. Not entirely his fault there as he tried to control it. But he's called for traveling moments ago, and now he could not control the ball. Well, he was in a hurry. He looked up to find out what a defensive man was. Didn't really have control of the basketball. He, therefore, he carried it. That's the thing Jay Burson does not do too often, turn the ball over. Oh, Moore looked as though he took an extra step in backing up. Armstrong looks good, doesn't it? 
at seven, eight points for B.J. Armstrong. 28-25 Iowa. There's Burson. Oh, what a pass. And was Burson doing a good job to get to it? He did a great job with body control because I thought he was going to buy the basket, just threw it up there softly for a shot. And right back with a three-pointer from Mo. His second three-pointer, he's got eight points. 31-27. 7.40 left, first half. Yeah, his tempo is up a little bit, and I think that's got to be to Iowa's advantage. The bench is stronger. They've had a lot more players play in this type of game, even though these two coaches coach the same way. White, easy little jumper, but it does not go. Comes back with it. Possession will go to Iowa. Horton coming back in. Marble coming back in for Iowa. And time has been called. 7.25 to go. Iowa with the big lead. It's been shipped to four. 31-27. Hawkeyes lead the Buckeyes. Jim Simpson, Quinn Buckner. We're at Iowa City as we begin the second half of the Big Ten season, which starts out with Purdue 8-1 in the conference, Michigan 7-2, Iowa 6-3, and, and Ohio State tied with Indiana at 5-4. Indiana tomorrow night will be looking for its fifth consecutive win in the Big Ten after a very poor start. Ohio State is now out rebounding Iowa 14 to 10. 31-27 the score. Iowa with the ball in the lead. Armstrong loose on the side momentarily. And there's a ball just snatched away by Wilson and a foul call by Dick Bester. Ed Horton got that foul there. He just was reaching for the ball from Curtis Wilson. Seven fouls now on Iowa, so we're in the one and one. Ohio State has six. Wilson, pretty good free throw shooter. He's got a three point play tonight, hitting about 75%. One and one. One twenty-eight. When Tom Davis hired Gary Williams as assistant at Lafayette, he didn't tell him he was making the soccer coach too because they didn't have money for an assistant coach. And Gary Williams had never seen a soccer game before. But he learned and finished about 500 on the year. This young man, Bill Jones, I expect to be a factor in this game today. He's a very versatile player, the player they put in the lineup to take Al Lorenzen's place. Out on Curtis Wilson, I believe, away from the ball. That'll be his first, and that's the seventh foul against the Buckeyes. Purdue still having its own way with Michigan State. Syracuse and Pittsburgh at the half. That's in the first half. Bo shoots, and he'll get another. He's got nine points. Now, to Ohio State's credit, I think they basically staved off the first half emotional lift that Iowa had. Now it's important for them to come down, take their time, and take the best shot they can get, and don't rush things. Wow, Mo had a, you heard the slap right here at the table, but no foul call. 45 left. Pardon me, Iowa's now come out into a man-to-man, -man, and they're going to try to deny Burson from getting the basketball. So Francis goes in. And is fouled on the way in. The first points for Francis is averaging about 16. The foul's on Marble. That's his third. Well, Jay Francis right here going to the basket. They call the foul against Ohio against Iowa. I'm not so sure. I saw Jay Francis' hands flying away, and Roy Marble gets called for his third foul. That's going to hurt Iowa. It's going to put them in a tough situation. Roy Marble gives them a lot of things. And now they got to get a young player, Michael Morgan, a player relatively untested an opportunity to play in this contest. Well, when you lose Al Lorenzen for good with the back surgery, and you've got your fellow who's led the team in scoring and leads the Big Ten in field goal percentage with three fouls on the bench, well, the person came away with it. That's tough. 33-31, six and a half minutes to go. Biggest lead, 13 points by Iowa. In Carter, used the backboard, no good. Mo comes down with it. DJ takes it all away, no good. 
Wilson. Foul on the way in. That's a foul on Michael Morgan, but Curtis Wilson, I don't know if the folks at home could see it, made a great decision. He thought he had a man open up court, didn't want to take a chance on a turnover, brought the ball down under control, and was able to get a foul call against Michael Morgan. What he was not... Well, he was still almost in the paint at the other end of the court. You could see his eyes zeroing in on the man he thought was clear and then made the decision you talked about. Here's Wilson, two for two from the line, five points. We got a one-point ball game, and he can tie it here. Now, the thing that I think Iowa has to do is come down, and they, they need to be patient. As I talked about earlier, I thought they were taking some shots quickly. They were going in early, but they were jump shots, and jump shots more often than not are going to come back to haunt you. Iowa's got to come down, be patient, try to get the ball inside. Then if they get the shot from it by kicking the ball outside, they should take advantage of those opportunities. Since it was 22-9, Ohio State has outscored Iowa 24-11. It's a tie ball game at 33 with six minutes to go in the first half. Hill, they leave him alone. He's not going to shoot from there. But Bo will shoot any place he can get it. And he's got a chance. Nope. Another whistle underneath, and I think they're looking at Michael Morgan again. The fouls are beginning to stack up against Iowa, and they're putting him at the line. Well, Jim, this is exactly the same thing that happened to Iowa's front court when they played at Ohio State, and it was one of the keys, I think, for Iowa losing that basketball game in Columbus. And the man they fouled is Burson, who's four for four tonight, and much better than 90% in Big Ten play. Mateen, Carter, Wilson. And Burson. In there for the Buckeyes. He's perfect, isn't he? That's six straight, and that's the first lead. 35-33, Ohio State. Jones only has two points in the power forward spot. The tough thing about being at home when you teams are sagging off like this, guys get impatient and take some ill-advised shots. That's a tough shot by P.J. Armstrong right there. But he's a good, great player. I mean, those shots you don't want him necessarily to take, but he can make that shot. Funny thing is, he was the man posted down low. The big men were outside. And that's definitely to Ohio State's advantage because they can't get any rebounds being way out there. 35 all. Wilson for three. He's got 10 points now, and it's a three-point lead for Ohio State. Morgan. Right there, Michael Morgan did what you have to do when you get in trouble. If you're not getting, making your jump shots, you got to get the ball inside, either on the drive or try to get a power move to the basket. He comes up, he pumps fake. The official calls the foul there, I believe, on Perry Carter. That's right. His second. All right, John Anderson is back in along with Mateen. And Jerry Francis is back in. Burson and Wilson are the rest of the Ohio State crew. Hill, Armstrong, Morgan, Horton, and Reeves for the Hawkeyes, as just does not go for Michael Morgan. Doesn't get either one up. Mateen's got the rebound. From the side, Francis takes a shot. Has knocked off with Jay Burson. The crowd thought that Burson had fouled. Well, Jay, the reason the crowd thought he'd fouled because he was there around the basketball. But what Jay Burson does, and I would advocate if he reach for the ball, is he swings up at it, and officials very rarely make that call. Armstrong. Two points they called out. Foot was on the line, I do believe. Good find. Burson. 
Ball knocked away. Here comes Horton. Armstrong fast down the other side, but Horton goes all the way. And Ed now has 11 points. 39-38. Iowa takes the lead with 3.55 to go. First half. Well, we got a good first half right there. I thought right there, Jay Burson probably got fouled. The officials didn't think so. Iowa converted it in transition. And as you can see, the fans involved in this contest. Speed, there's Anderson. And John Anderson has his first basket. Ohio State by one. Armstrong, no, off the front. And Burson with the rebound. Burson gets things going in a hurry for an Ohio State team that likes to play the half-court game. Feed back out. Francis is going to take it up. No good. Picked up, and there's a reach in by Curtis Wilson. His second. See Curtis Wilson is going pretty hard there. I think he might have been a little tired. He probably couldn't get back on defense and made an ill-advised foul by reaching in in the backcourt. Well, if you read the papers, and that's what you do in Iowa City, Everybody was expecting an up-tempo game. I think they've hit it right on the nose. <laughs> to say the least. Here's Armstrong. You almost had to need calculators for these fellas. 11, 12 points for Armstrong. One for one from the line. That was on a three-point play. <laughs> 40 apiece. That's Scott Anderson there on the sideline. And now for the first time, Mark Jewell is coming in. And then Mr. Basketball in Indiana, and he'll replace Michael Morgan. as 13. They lead by one. Up by nine. The number four in the USA Today poll, which is what we've been using, number two in the wire polls. Temple, of course, number one. Ohio State, four of six. Iowa's taken many more three-point plays. They've got four, but they've tried ten times. Iowa shows some pressure. Here's Wilson, who leads the Big Ten in steals. And set an Ohio, Ohio State record for, check that, not steals, assists, assists assist last year. Burson and Wilson look to Gary Williams at the bench to see what it is they're supposed to run here. Here's the team way outside. He's going to take the shot. And does not drop. Underneath is Bill Jones. Jones all the way to the basket. No good. Mateen with the rebound. Burson, but Iowa's back in plenty of time. Francis, Horton there, but nobody on Anderson, and he misses. Mateen comes out with it. Puts it up again. This time it's good, and Mateen has his first point. Well, you see Ohio State just out fighting Iowa for some of the shots here. I don't know. Iowa's not getting back in transition defensively, and Ohio State seems to be a little more aggressive getting the offensive rebounds. I think Ohio State, after the early beginning, now thinks they can win this ball game. Horton. He now has 13 points. That was a great pass inside by Jewel. Kind of a wrap pass, but he got it inside. Two minutes to go. Good play. Francis. Yes, and the blocker gets Horton, his second. That, that was a CT, Tulsa TV 41, the good-looking channel. Right here, you see him. He goes up like he's going to shoot the jump shot. Francis comes with the ball, takes it to the basket. Ed Horton gets called for the foul. This is the second time that Jerry Francis, you'll watch it here. And Ed Horton definitely stepped over to try to take the charge, but he stepped over too late, and I think he's going to have to come out now. This is the second time, as we said, that Francis has had a chance for three-point play. He missed the last time. Kent Hill comes in. Horton takes a seat. Reeves comes in. Now, this is the thing that Quinn was talking about that Iowa can do that you may see a noticeable difference in the second half. They run in a lot of folks. And so now Gary Williams is going to do the same thing. He's got Carter up. Francis misses this one, too. Off the hands. So I thought of Anderson, but they say no of Iowa. Now Scott Anderson comes in. Tony Carter comes in. Curtis Wilson goes out. And Grady Mateen goes out. John Anderson did a good job there. 
Ken Hill had him blocked out. John Anderson just put his body on him and put him under the basket and was able to get come up with that ball. There's a foul, and Francis is the man. He reached after Armstrong. He says he didn't, but his brother obviously said he did. To hold him up to keep him from going to the basket. Yeah, from this angle, you see B.J. Armstrong makes a great play. I don't know if it was intentional. I think he fell down. He didn't try to grab him. He just fell down. See, he fell on his leg. He didn't try to grab him, and that's why he was pleading his case. But that's un not important at that time. He fell on uh, B.J. as he was going to get the basketball. That is a foul. I apologize to Jerry Francis. He did not reach out. He just fell, as you saw. There's Armstrong. He is three for three from the line and has 14 points. Both coaches are doing a good job of getting a lot of substitutions in here. This is, as you said, a, an up-tempo basketball game, and they need to keep fresh people in the game. High ball game, and Armstrong will have a chance for another. They're tied at 44 with 1.55 to go. Eighty-eight percent free throw shooter before tonight, and he's four for four here. And now Jeff Moe coming back in. Armstrong will go out. So Hill, Reeves, Jewell, Moe, and Jones for Iowa. Carter gets the ball in to Scott Anderson. Francis going to take the shot over Hill. No good. Battle for it. Tell you what, the ball goes to Moe, but the Ohio State aggressiveness on rebounding is apparent. Yeah, they really stand after the basketball. Iowa came up with that one, but it was not due to lack of effort on Ohio State. That's for two. 47-44. That's the biggest lead that Iowa's had in some time. At one time, they led by 13. No, we got, 15 to go. Exactly. We got 115. Now Ohio State needs to come down here and try to get a good shot opportunity. They don't need to rush it. They're in a good position. They want to make sure, and I think they got a good chance to stay down, stay out of double figures going in at halftime. Francis. Yep. And that's a two-point shot. Six points for Jerry Francis. Well, that's not the kind of shot you want, but when it goes in, it's one of those coaches said, no, no, good shot. <laughs> Mo says, I want this all the way and gets it. And that is poor defense by Ohio state for a man to drive from the baseline through the middle and get a layup like that 12 points for mo who did that i will buy three and now they can almost turn off the clock it's about a one second difference between the shot clock and the game clock well as you watch the game clock there that's just about what the shot clock shows about a second difference so they'll play for the last shot and no and i was actually in their zone and they're coming out they were faking like they were going to get pressure, and I think eventually they may show some man-to-man -man just to make sure that Ohio State doesn't get a good shot. No, they're back into the zone. They're going to make them shoot jump shots. Francis, no! And a foul over the back by Anderson. And it could go from a three-point to a five-point game at the half. Well, that's not a foul you want right here. You're going in, the shot goes up, and you see coming in on the left of your screen, it's a tough angle to see it, but they call the foul right there on John Anderson. And Jewell is better than a 50% free throw shooter. 9 of 14 this year. He had a little left-handed jumper, remember, for his only two points. B.J. Armstrong comes in for defense here in the last three seconds of the first half. Reeves takes a seat. Jewel makes this. He can go ahead and increase the lead to five, possibly. But he's got to make this. And does. Four-point lead. Gary Williams to Sid Rotoheffer. Can you see? Crossing a five-point lead. It's in the air and off the top of the backboard. Ohio State.
has come out of this pretty well. They, they thought, came out, stumbled a little bit early in the basketball game. Right now, they're down four points. I think they played an exceptional first half. Better check your math course. You're down five points. <laughs> yeah, I do have to check that, don't I? We'll come back. Big halftime for you at the Big Ten Network. But first, these local messages. And only a three-point deficit for the foul under the basket. Gave Iowa the chance to add two more points. First, as we said, is the 18. Wilson 10. Carter 6. But Carter has six rebounds. Armstrong's got 16, Horton 13, Moe 12, while Kent Hill is the leading rebounder with four. They really hadn't come to fruition, I think, as far as Ohio State. Their inside players haven't gotten them the kind of points I think they're going to need in order to win this basketball game. Roy Marble, D.J. Armstrong, Bill Jones, Jeff Moe, and Ed Horton starting for Iowa, and the same Burson, Wilson, Francis Carter and White and there's Burson and he is fouled very quickly and it is by Horton and that will give his, Ed Horton his third personal foul as Roy Marble right there also got his third personal foul back in the first half. Ed Horton gets that foul called against him but I would have to say that that foul is more should be charged to B.J. Armstrong once the ball was going to the defensive basket he should have backed up that way not allow Jay Burson who everybody knows is going to get the basketball to get in position to catch the ball. Seven straight free throws for Burson. And if he makes this one, he'll have 20 points on the night with only three seconds gone, and he doesn't get it. Moe gets the rebound. And it's seven in a row, and missed that one. And Ohio State comes back out in the man to man defense. They're going to stay off Horton. Now underneath. The way Curtis Wilson is looking around, it could be on him. That's who it is. And that'll be his third. Now he's done a good job of pushing the basketball up and finding some people uh, after he's done that. So Ohio State can ill afford to lose him. The leading assist man, averaging better than six per game at the Big Ten. And I was, was now playing against his own at Ohio State's playing. Marble, the ball goes off the hands of Francis, but they say it was not last touched by Iowa. Tell you, that was not a good shot by Marble. Marble only has one point. He's averaging nearly 15. Good pass. Oh, good pass, and right there's Carter. Well, you saw an example of what Curtis Wilson can do. Carter got the basket, but Curtis Wilson makes the pass that leads to that basket. Jones driving, batted away by Carter. The first block shot of the night, as I, as far as I can remember. Marble gets it, and he's fouled. Jim, that was just a very aggressive take to the basket by Roy Marble. Got the ball thrown in from the outside, turned around, went up strong, and they called Jerry Francis for the foul underneath. Third foul against Jerry Francis. Marble misses. Jim, that was Marble's first basket in the game. That's right. And his other shots have not looked that good. But he's a scorer in the preseason All-American. Four-point lead, Iowa, 18.50 to go. Iowa's been in foul trouble, so they've come out in somewhat of a matchup zone. By matchup, they point the ball to keep a man near the basketball at all times. Burson stepping around Marble and getting a high arching shot off. Jay Burson is hot tonight, 21 points. Well, you see he's coming out with the attitude that he's going to have to have in order for Ohio State to stay in the game. They're not getting much of the outside shooting. Jay Burson is it. He's taking it upon his shoulders to try to win this basketball game for Ohio State. Ken Hill, who has no points but four rebounds in the first half. Good pass there. Bided away again by Carter. Hill is getting ready to come in. Two on one. Burson! But what I really thought worked out very well for Ohio State against Iowa, while the Iowa players were complaining that was a goal tend, and Jay Burston did just what you need to do, push the ball up the court until you hear a whistle. Tied at 53. Armstrong shooting over two men. In, out, and in. 16, 18 points now for B.J. Armstrong. Needs of Francis, he's out of control, and they say he is fouled by the man on the floor, who is Jeff Moe. 
That that's will be Moe's first. Yeah, that's a good find by Curtis Wilson. He had Jay Burson open on the far side of the court, chose to throw the ball right there to Francis, who got fouled. Barton comes out, Hill comes in for him. Reeves is also in, and Moe goes out. White's going to take it and not get it. Carter has been tough under there, but loses that away. Great hustle by D.J. Armstrong. Oh, yeah. He to Reeves. Going to take it. Got it. Five points for Reeves. 57-53, Iowa. I tell you, the tempo of this game is something else. It really is. The thing that I hear on this press that Ohio State has gotten away continually, and I don't know how long they can continue that, they get the ball in the corner. And when you do that, you, what you do is put yourself in a trap position where you use the two baselines as an extra defensive play. Francis, he can hit from there, but does not. And Hill gets another big rebound. Iowa leading by four, looking to go up by more. Armstrong, Burson really didn't cover him up. And Francis gets the rebound away from Hill. And Hill may have drawn the foul. I think he did. He did a good job hustling. Looked like he got better position, had the ball. Francis got called for the foul. That's going to hurt Ohio State. That's his fourth. Larry Francis goes out. Grady Mateen comes in. Hill and Francis in the big battle. And it was... Hill, who was fouled and is at the line. Hill has no points, but has been tough under the board. Now he's got one. Five-point lead as it was at the half. Iowa 58, Ohio State 53. Well, Ken Hill's primary responsibility is to get rebounds and, and get opportunity baskets. By that, I mean when the ball comes off the basket to get it back in or if they come up with steals and throw it to him on the break to get those kind of baskets. Sixteen and a half minutes remain. There's Mateen. And Burson is loose. Nobody covered it. And that's three points. Well, that's, that's a bad defensive play on Iowa. They're in a matchup zone. They got the guy who's been killing them, and they let him shoot a wide-open jump shot. I don't understand that. 26 points for Burson. And a three-point game. Armstrong, person following him, drives, puts it in. Armstrong now has 20 points. That was just a great move right there by B.J. Armstrong. He took it up over three big Ohio State players, got it in. Five-point lead. Iowa. State has got to start getting some point production out of some of the players. Jay Burson cannot carry this load for the entire 20 minutes of the half. Oh, off the hands of the team. Iowa looking to increase its lead. Jones can hit. Does not. Jones got the rebound. Jones has almost lost the ball out of bounds, but has it. And does the wise thing, throws it back out to B.J. Armstrong, and as you see, Iowa's taking their time. Armstrong again, second time. This time he misses. Belongs to Ohio State. Time has been called. 14.59 to go in the game. It's a five-point game, 61-56. Iowa leads. 14.59 to go. <laughs> Laughing at the commercial, McLean Stevenson. 61-56, Iowa. Here comes Ohio State on the floor. It is Wilson, Burson, Carter, Mateen, and White. Let's see who Tom Davis sets out. Moe is back in the ball game. Hill is out there. Reeves, Horton, and Marble. So well, B.J. Armstrong is on the bench at the moment. I'm sure one of the things Gary Williams said to his team is, let's not get rattled here, guys. We're in good shape. Let's just take whatever the defense gives us. Don't take quick shots. Wilson, <laughs> in and out. That's not what he did. And a foul on Carter. That'll be his third. 
Well, that's not what he wanted, at least what you were saying he wanted. No, that's not what he wanted, and what it compounded that was the fact that the guy who's leading him in scoring was wide open to his left in three-point range, and you got to get your scores to basketball. That was definitely an ill-advised shot, a bad shot, quite frankly, by Curtis Wilson. State has come back now. Instead of being in that man-to-man, -man, they're in a 2-3 zone, trying to keep Iowa from getting the shots inside, wanting to shoot the jump shot. This is the man who can shoot the jump shot, but he does not take it. Marble has three points thus far. They get the ball to Roy, and that's Person causing the turnover. Person reached in. And Wilson looking clear across court. Got to bring it back out in Dallas. As Iowa sets up in the zone. The reason he brought it back out, I think, is to get Gary Williams in his right hand. Right. <laughs> There's Person, but he's looking to throw the ball away and get to the other side. Carter, yes. Carter's got 10 points. But it has been strong under the board. 61-58, 13-45 to go. Iowa leads. Ohio State led briefly toward the end of the first half. If Ohio State is allowed to get the basketball in there, they got enough people to score that Iowa's going to be in a tough situation late in the game. The Hill. That's the to draw the foul. Carter, his fourth. Put the ball on the floor and drew Carter right over top of him. Gary Williams is talking to John Anderson. Carter has been a horse. Had six rebounds in the first half alone. Perry Carter is a horse. I mean, he can jump well. He does some pretty good scoring in close to the basket. He's a great rebounder. He has a good attitude. Got called there for the foul. Obviously disappointed. The young man averaged 18 <laughs> rebounds a game as a senior in high school. And I'm sure there was some concern as to whether or not he would make the transition from high school to the college level, collegiate level. And I think he's done a great job at that. He's a freshman out of Gonzaga, Washington, D.C., where he's a pretty All-American. Kent Hill is now three for three from the line. Absolute picture perfect, four points. Five-point game as it was at the half. Thirteen and a half minutes to go. Now, with Perry going out of the basketball game, it's infinitely more important that Ohio State be patient because they're not going to have as many opportunities to get offensive rebound baskets that Perry Carter used to get. for the moment. Armstrong is back in. There's Curtis Wilson that went off the hands of one of the hour men and Armstrong recovers it down in the corner. That is not the shot that you want to take at that point. Curtis Wilson is the guy who distributes the ball. Jay Burson takes that shot. I think you could be a little more pleased with it. Curtis Wilson has to be a little more patient. Moe. Three pointers off the side. There's Jones. And that's the power fall <laughs> for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He's about 6'7". There's a bad throw in by Matini. He's having his trouble. There's Jones again. No good. Jones again. No good. Hill's got it and a foul. The foul will be probably on Tony White, but I thought that play was made, both of those plays were made by Billy Jones. He shot the ball. He missed it, chased it down, got his hands on it again. Right there, you see, he chases the ball down, takes it to the basket strong. It goes up, he shoots it short, comes up with it again, and you see Ken Hill come in and get it, and he called Tony White for the foul against Ken Hill. That's Tony White's second foul. But Bill Jones made the play. He made the steal, took the shot, chased it down, and kept the ball alive. That's a good play by him. 16 fouls against the Buckeyes now, only two against the Hawkeyes. Mo! 15 points for Mo, 10-point lead. takes the ball away. 15 to 4. Iowa has outscored Ohio State. Well, they've not only outscored them, but as we talked about earlier, I was concerned about how fresh the Ohio State players could play. There was a lot of substitutions, I thought, by Gary Williams, but Iowa's done a tremendous job of keeping their players fresh. Look at Burson misses that. And Mo did step on the sideline, so it belongs to Ohio State. Villanova and number one Temple, 20 apiece. 
Syracuse leading Pittsburgh in the second half by only three. Auburn beat Kentucky last time by one point. Kentucky's got it by nine. Five seconds on the crossing. Potter couldn't get it in. Bill Jones is nodding at Kurt Hillary. The official saying you're exactly right. Time called. Ohio State has come apart for the moment. But they were down 13 in the first half. Now they're down 10. 12 or 4 to go. Back to Iowa City after these local cast of tonight's game authorized by the Big Ten Conference and intended solely for the private use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other counts, a description of this game without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference is strictly prohibited. Remember at one time it was 53 all. Since that time, Iowa scored 15 points. Ohio State has scored five. Well, I don't think I, Ohio State has done a very good job of staying patient. And some of that is due to Iowa. They've come out, picked up their defensive pressure. Ohio State consequently has turned over the basketball, taken some bad shots. And as you see now, there's a 10-point lead by Iowa. And remember, Burson's got 26 points. Much of those in this half of the, let's see, in the second half he has eight points, came within the first minute. Since then, he's hardly taken a shot. Wilson has been taking some shots down court. Well, Wilson has taken some shots, as I mentioned earlier, that I don't think he should be taking. But I would imagine with Jay Burson carrying the brunt of this load, that he's got to be getting a little bit tired also. 23 pushing off. That'll be four on Marble. You can hear Sid Rotohuffer say that. 23, you're pushing, and that's number four on Roy Marble, who has but three points. And he's led this club in scoring the last two years and averaging better than 14 points a game this year. Roy Marble's really having a tough game as you see Ken Hill coming in here. So what that's going to do is it's going to hurt some of the, the versatility that I would normally have because of Marble's ability. You know, Burson was all by himself on this side of the court, and the team actually did not see him. Didn't have to throw it over anybody to get it to him. And chose, looked a little panicky, and finally got it in. I agree with you. Burson has been open there about four or five times. I don't know uh, what Coach Williams has in mind with Jay, uh, Gary taking the ball out. Don Anderson makes it 68-60, Iowa. Armstrong, no. Good block out. Oh, Horton. Boy, is that tough, but Mateen blocks the ball away, and Hill comes up with it. I said good block out because I thought John Anderson did a good job of blocking out Ed Horton. Ed Horton made a great play and came up with the basketball. Ohio State time on the shot clock. Sorry, Ohio State is back in their man-to-man -man defense, trying to make Iowa shoot the ball from outside, keep it away from Hill and Horton down on the block. Good pass. Oh, got it into Jones, and Jones is absolutely level. That's just a great pass by Ed Horton. He's standing out there where he can make the shot. Got it right in there to Bill Jones. Got Grady Machine for the foul. His third. You see Ed Horton just makes a great bounce pass right there. Tony White can't get there in time. You see Grady Mateen goes up, and it makes the cardinal sin as far as the shot blocker is concerned. If a shot blocker goes up, gets his hand straight up, then he has as much right to that air as does the offensive player. But once you start bringing your arm down toward the offensive player, you're more than likely going to get called for the foul. Tell you what, Iowa is leading this ball game. But that is just the fifth point for Jones, and Marble only has three. So from their forward play, they only have eight points, and we've got 10.48 to go in the game. They've been able to get some from some of the other players. Uh, the ones we talked about earlier, uh, Reeves came in and I thought they did a good job in the first half. B.J. Armstrong is having his usual consistent basketball game, so they haven't needed as much production from the fourth. Ball goes right back to Jones. The ball knocked away by Burson. And by the way, Jerry Francis, with four personal fouls, has replaced Mateen. Oh, uh, he's out there walking on the thin edge. in this half, but he's got 15 points, and it's an 11-point lead. Wilson is taking all the shots, and he gets that one. Good for two. 12 points for Curtis Wilson. Great pass. Oh, yeah, and Hill is fouled by White, his third. 
that was a great play. But again, what doesn't go into would probably go into statistic had he made it. But right here, you see Bill Jones with the ball, makes a great pass right there. Ken Hill comes in, tries to dunk it, gets fouled by Tony White. That's a good play by Ken Hill. He took the ball to the basket strong. Got Tony White called for the foul. With a nine-point lead, Gary Williams is loading up. He's sending back in Perry Carter, who, like Jerry Francis, also has four personal fouls. It's do-or-die time, and here's Ken Hill is four for four from the line. There's no question that Gary Williams is, is taking a risk here by putting in his two, what, are, if you will, call horses, the big guys to play. But he doesn't want this game to get too far away from him. Right now, they're down nine points. They're, they know if he gets the game down 15 points here in Iowa, the fans get involved in the game, and it's going to be extremely difficult to come back. Well, Tom Davis says, okay, I'll do the same thing. So he brings in Roy Marble, who's got four personal fouls. 72-62, 10-14 to go. 10-point lead, Iowa. Check that. Yes, it is 72-62. His 11th point of this half, he's got 29. Armstrong all the way, and it drops into the hands of Carter. That's a good move to the master by B.J. Armstrong. He just couldn't get it to go down that time. Wilson takes it in and gets it. And now all of a sudden, it's a, not a 10-point game, it's a 5-point game. And a block. Called on Burson, and that is his second. The foul situation, team foul situation, I obviously has come into play here. That was a great move by B.J. Armstrong, who faked Jay Burson into thinking he was going to go up for the shot. Kept going. Jay Burson was going to attempt the block and got called for the foul. Armstrong with 20 points, perfect from the line, five for five. But this is his first trip in the second half. <laughs> Six-point game, 9.34 to go. In doubt. In doubt. <laughs> 22 points for B.J. Armstrong. Pressure shown by Iowa. Carter better get it in. Does. They're really having a tough time against the pressure. Francis, no. And Horton with a tough rebound. Carter had to back off. He's got four personal fouls. Armstrong lost the ball, and now Hill is walking with the ball. There were two walks there. They got the second one. Yeah, they really did. B.J. Armstrong actually was a little bit out of control. He, he's going to come out. Jeff Moe is going to come, come for him right now. But he pushed the ball up and just got a little carry. Well, you see right there, he lost it actually just as he started to, to palm it. Realized he was about to travel with the ball, let it go. And that's a good call. Scott Anderson, noted for defense, replaces Curtis Wilson, who gets a blow here with 9.20 to go at a seven-point game. I said it was a good call. The call was actually on Ken Hill, but it was still a good call. Francis. Nope. Anderson with the rebound. He's going to take the shot. No good. Anderson is not a shooter, averaging only two points a game. point play and 12 points and it's a 10 point game again Francis holds up and has it that was a very good play by Derek Francis he got there got himself under control made the basket right there the three pointer caught Iowa standing actually everybody got so excited and giving five but they didn't get it in jump ball still belongs to Iowa 835 to go eight point game Hill coming back in. And Horton didn't realize it, but now does that he must go out. Good find. Jones over everybody. And a good pass from Mo. Seven points for Jones. It's ten point game again. Francis better watch himself, but goes to the basket. No good. And Marble comes down with it. Reeves feeds the Mo. Who misses, followed by Jones. That was just Bill Jones hustling down right there. Iowa got the ball up like they want to do. Now Ohio State is 
got to take advantage of what they can get, but they can't be in a hurry. Francis going to take it short, and there's Hill. Gary Williams, oh, he got it back. Now Williams wants a foul, but he's not going to get it. Oh, the Jones. No, and there's White. And White has grabbed that, but could be all for Marvel. That could be all for Marvel. If number 23 gets up, he's out of there. With just three points on the night, well below his 14-point average. I mean, I, I don't understand falling out that way. You know you got four fouls. You're a crucial part. Regardless, you're in the basketball game, and you get a call for a foul like that. I'm not sure what Roy Marble had in mind to try to get accomplished right there. As you see, Tom Davis is not at all pleased with that call. He's still out on the floor, but the scoreboard is, oh, we've got it. He's looked up and he sees it. He'll wait until Horton comes back in. Twelve-point game. Iowa led by 13 in the first half. They got a 12 now, but as it was in the first half when they had the 13-point, a lot of time left. 7.43 to go in the game. Iowa up by 12. Right there, you see, coming down the court, Reeves makes the pass to Jeff Moe, and the three-pointer really gets your team involved in the game. Right there, Jeff Moe shoots it, it's all net, and you see Jeff Moe seems to like it, and the fans like it. It was the start of the run that Iowa had to give them the lead they have now, 81-69. Moe with 18 points and four three-pointers. He usually comes along with the kind of enthusiasm that he showed on that last shot. He'd been coming off the bench with that. Now it's important for Tom Davis to find out who else can come off the bench, give him that kind of scoring power, but who can give him that emotional lift that Jeff Moe normally gives him. Ohio State scoring with his starting five. Remember, both Francis and Carter have four personal fouls. He won 69. Francis, he's been doing well from there. How about that, Purdue? Number four in the USA Today poll, number two in many other polls. Five-point game. Kent Hill called with a foul. That is his second. Francis is 0 for 2 from the line, both in the first half. Has 10 points. <laughs> Iowa by nine. A little bit more than seven minutes left. Ohio State's back out into the man to man. Kind of a sag of man to man. They want to protect the middle as much as they can. Well, this game has been in high gear since the tip-off. Well, you got similar styles here. Both teams would rather pressure the ball and push it up court. I don't think Ohio State has the manpower that Iowa has. Francis all over Jones. Horton. Oh, what a shot. Well, that was a very good shot by there by Ed Horton. But it was Bill Jones who set him up for it. Went into the paint, saw an opportunity to get the open man the basketball. Ed Horton did make a great play. Though. 17 points by Horton. Francis wants to do it. No good. And as Carter reaching him. Nope, that's White. But that'll be White's four. White has four. Carter has four. Francis has four. Wilson has three personal fouls. And Grady Matino on the bench has three personal fouls. Scott Anderson coming back in. Francis going out. Gary Williams talking to him. I'm sure one of the things he's talking to him about is the shot. That was a, a tough shot to, to take. I mean, it looked, it may have looked easy to some people, but I didn't know how he was going to get it in, and I just thought it was a really by a shot. Nine points by Bill Jones, seven in this half. But along with his nine points, Bill Jones has, has eight rebounds. <laughs> Scott Anderson goes up and gets it. State shows a willingness to push the ball up. And there's a pass off right to the hands of Horton. 
by Wilson. And now a pass off the hands of everybody. And Anderson, who started the whole thing with a rebound, comes back with it. Subtly, that play was made by Jay Burson. When the ball got in his area, instead of trying to catch it, he couldn't get control. So he just knocked it in the area where he could run it down. Uh-oh. Good find. Anderson, no, no, not even close. Point game again as it was back in the first half. But that's it. That was midway through the first half. This is midway through the second half. 544 to go. A long way to come back for the Buckeyes of Ohio State who in Columbus beat Iowa. Back to Iowa. To be aggressive. You don't want to pull them back now. Iowa's outscored Ohio State 35-26 in the second half. They got 77 in the second half in their losing situation with Michigan in a wild, wild game last Wednesday night. Now, Iowa's come out and gone into their matchup zone. Harder, nope. The team can't get it. Here comes Iowa. Kent Hill got another big, rugged rebound. Orton pushes it up and pushes it in. That's what it is. 19 points. Excuse me. That's where Ed Horton is really effective. He gets inside the paint. He's shown that he's very capable of getting the ball in the basket. And Barry Carter. Pardon me. Now on Horton, that's his fourth. You see right here, Scott Anderson's coming to the basket. And what you see is he got tripped. I'm sorry. Boy, did he ever get tripped. Horton got tripped and Anderson got tripped. Both got tripped. He got tripped. Perry Carter hurt his shoulder because he, was, he got there, was going to try to set a pick, realized he was too late. He stopped. I thought that he pushed Ed Horton into Scott Anderson. Anderson misses. That puts an eight for 14 on the year. Gary Williams, as you just saw right there, knows that in this situation, you got to make the foul shot because it's the only opportunity you have in the score baskets right now. Horton is not only swinging at Burson, but he's giving Burson a few words, and Jay's looking back at him. It would be a mismatch in favor of Horton. Sure would. <laughs> Speaking of that kind of thing, Derek Eisman, a good linebacker for Ohio State, has left the team, the football team, because he wants to be in the Super Heavyweights in the Olympics. He got to the semifinals of the National Golden Gloves four years ago, and a fellow by the name Mike Tyson beat him, so he thinks he's got a chance to make the Olympic team. Backup linebacker with what was Earl Bruce's team, now John Cooper. That's B.J. Armstrong. Oh, no, he says he stepped on the line. They use a lot of time off the clock and a 15-point lead, 87-72, with 4.24 to go. There's a lot of time on the clock. Ohio State has still got to push the ball up and try to get good shot opportunities. They don't have to take quick shots, but they got to push the ball up and see what the defense gives them. Barson for two, off the front, right to Horton, to Jones. Jones, call! No basket. Crowd goes wide. As you see, Bill Jones is pushing the basketball up. I don't know how you can say that Jay Burson had time to get in front of Bill Jones right there. The officials seem to think that that was the call to make. He makes the call. I can guarantee you there's some people that are not very pleased by that one. As I was leading 87-72. defeated number seven Pittsburgh Jim Beheim's team coming on as they get closer and closer to tournament time and Temple at the half leads Villanova only by one I think on that last play that Ohio State came out of that, that pretty good Jay Burson got there the officially thought that the foul should have been called against Bill Jones now Ohio State has a chance to get back well not necessarily back in the ball game but to get a good shot opportunity anyway Took him out of bounds. Anderson, he can hit from there and does. Good pass into the teeth of the defense by Scott Anderson to John Anderson, who turned around and knocked down the little eight footer. Iowa 
can use a lot of the clock and should use a lot of the clock. After all, there's less than three and a half minutes to go. Well, that's exactly what they're doing. They pull the ball out now and have everybody pretty much in front of Wilson them. Wilson slaps it and slaps his hand, and that's the fourth personal foul on Curtis Wilson. Excuse the me, time sir. is running out on the Buckeyes. Excuse me. Had the ball on top of the foul line, trying to get every, the people from Ohio State to overplay to hopefully get some easy baskets. Right there, Curtis Wilson tried for the ball. Foul, Ken Hill. 29 points for Jay Burson. Hill, all of his points, and he's got five that come from the foul line, where he's five of six. And that's a welcome uh, contribution from Ken Hill, because that's something normally that he doesn't do in terms of contribution to the team. He's not a very good shot, foul shooter. He's shooting the ball well tonight, and he's rebounded extremely well for him also. He's got six points and ten rebounds. Ohio State has four of its next five games at home. They'll be thankful for that. And Iowa gets Purdue here Monday night. Wilson tries and does not hit. And Armstrong with a rebound. It's down the court. One shot by the Buckeyes, and then the Hawkeyes come back. Well, not only that, it's, it's, that's not the young man you would like to have him shooting the shots. Jay Burson is a better three-point shooter. I think Scott Anderson would be considered a better three-point shooter. That's who you'd want taking those shots. Burson with 29 points, as we said. B.J. Armstrong has 22 points. Ed Horton has 19 points. And Jeff Moe has 20 points. Burson, he's got to make something happen. And can't make that happen. And Hill with yet another rebound. Good play by B.J. Armstrong to bring the ball back out. That's on Anderson. Kent Hill, aside from his six points, has 10, 11 rebounds. So he's got seven already in this half after four to lead the team in the first half. Well, everyone's going to start saying, here comes Purdue on Monday night. How will the Boilermakers do down here? Well, as you know, it's tough to play on the uh, opposition's home court. Chance to look at this. KGCT, Tulsa TV 41, the good-looking channel. Mitch has been put, done pretty well, even though they haven't played much in the second half. 14-point lead, that's the biggest lead. Anderson can't get it. The other Anderson goes up, puts it up, no good. Horton with a rebound. Tell you what, get out of the way of Ed when he gets the ball. Yeah, Ed definitely means business in there. He's going to have to be careful because he's going to hit somebody with that elbow and it's going to hurt him. Less than two minutes to go. This ball game belongs to Iowa. They will be 17 and 6 and 7 and 3 in the Big Ten. Ohio State hopes for the NCAA tourney will be 12 and 8 and 5 and 5 in the Big Ten. Dropping out of the tie with Indiana in fourth place. Indiana gets Northwestern home tomorrow night. Minute and a half left. Four seconds on the shot clock. Armstrong. Yeah! Three. That's a two-pointer. It's a two-pointer, but when it's gone, it's gone. B.J. Armstrong dribbled around, was trying to use a lot of the clock, shot it as it was running down. 24 points for Armstrong. Hill with his fourth rebound off the shot of Scott Anderson. Armstrong goes up. No good. It's foul. Well, in addition to other things here, I think it's become clear that Iowa just ran Ohio State down. Ohio State's basketball players ran out of gas, if you will, got tired, because if you noticed on that fast break, there was only one Ohio State player back, and Coach Williams is making some substitutions right here. Curtis Wilson has just fouled out. He has fouled out with 14 points, and Mateen limps out. Armstrong goes to the line. His career high is 27. Second half, Purdue over Michigan State by just four. Two and a half minutes left in that game. What a game. Purdue marches into Michigan State. A team that's only lost one, three games in the conference, and they're giving Purdue fits. Well, I think that's an example right there, that score of the depth in this conference. That you can go into everybody else's place to play, but you got to come in with your best game go to, to play, because if you don't, Purdue has themselves in a game that, on paper, they're better than Michigan State, but Michigan State playing very well. Mo goes out with 20 points.
Armstrong has 26 points, one within his career high, as Tom Davis is making wholesale substitutions. 29 points for Jay Burson of Ohio State, as we'll probably be leaving the area in a hurry once this game is over. Bradley's in the ball game. Puts boy, he, he wanted to shoot since he got it, didn't he? And Morgan brings it down. He's, don't get in that often. He's trying to get on the scoreboard, you know, get, get on the score sheet. He doesn't get in that often, as you said. He's trying to get in there. Mark Jewell shoots no good. White with the rebound for Ohio State. And Bradley again feeds almost past Anderson. He's got to take the shot. No good there, and it's just one shot, and here they come again. Ohio State, up of the boys, not doing much offensively. Ball still belongs to Ohio State. You know, this we'll game, that with Iowa. Excuse me, the game got away from Ohio State, but I thought they did a good job of, of keeping Iowa from getting away in the first half. I do think that they got tired in the second half, was not able to stay in it, and Iowa showed some of their experience by going on and, and taking what I think is going to be a, a sizable lead in this game. Reeves, no good. And the big man, Les Jepson, all seven feet, one inch of him, Bo Bells, North Dakota, commits the foul with 27 seconds to go and an 18-point lead for Iowa. John Havlicek will join me on Saturday afternoon at 4 Eastern, 3 Central. Indiana goes to Michigan. Michigan's at Wisconsin tomorrow night while Indiana is hosting Northwestern before they meet each other on Saturday afternoon. In the game for the first time, takes the shot. Bradley. Bradley takes the shot. Bradley's going to take another shot. Knocked away. Whistle blows. Tell it on Jepson. And it is on Jepson again. 30 seconds to go. Purdue up by just two. Over Michigan State, proving, as Quinn pointed out, as we all do, that when you're on the road, and hook out. Doss, who missed moments ago, gets his first point of the game. Just 14 seconds left. Oh, good. Jepson with the rebound. Michael Morgan. Goes right over the back of Anderson, who holds him up. And give John Anderson some credit, because Michael Morgan was absolutely out of control and was fortunate that he didn't get hurt on that play. See him coming right here. Anderson is standing there. There's no question about it. And Anderson just, he catches him, and he's, you can tell how strong he is. He catches him from the back. In this angle. But well, I've seen people get hurt like that. The young man's really got to be careful. That was on Anderson. Shot at the buzzer by Doss is no good, and this one is all over. Again, despite Burson's 29 points, Armstrong had 26, and Moe had 20. And it's Iowa all the way. Now 17 and 6, 7 and 3 in the Big Ten. Ohio State 12 and 8, now 5 and 5 in the Big Ten. 92-75, the final score. State. The final score, 92-75. And we'll see you for another Big Ten game on Saturday afternoon when Indiana goes to Michigan.